just outside the city limits of St. Augustine, literally on the other side of the railroad track, is this easy-to-miss monument. Erected in memory of the first St. John's County resident killed in action in Vietnam, Leo Chase Jr., the son of St. Augustine's black undertaker, wanted to make a difference and join the Army in 1963. Vietnam was just beginning to appear on the horizons. I think the U.S. government was targeting African Americans for compulsory service, partially in an effort to deplete the ranks of the civil rights movement. Hank Thomas was drafted. He and I were together in Vietnam. Far from home, Hank Thomas and Leo Chase prepared for America's first major engagement. You know that a lot of people are going to get killed, but we didn't talk about it. We just drank beer. And I think when we left, we parted. I said, okay, uh, Leo, you got to keep your head down. And it's something that you know, soldiers always say. Little did either man know. We were in the same battle called the Battle of the Eye Drain Valley. We'll be landing under fire, gentlemen. A horrific battle, memorably dramatized in the Mel Gibson film, We Were Soldiers. We will all come home together. It was another week before Hank got the news Leo Chase was also among the dead. But they put that monument on the black side of town. He didn't just die for, uh, in the service of black people. He died in the service of his country. So why was that monument put out there? You want him out here with other colored people and you don't, so white people don't have to be reminded. But this belonged downtown. The dead of St. Augustine tell a story the living will not. As eternal resting places go, this is a pretty nice one. Here under the Spanish moss in beautiful Evergreen Cemetery, you'll find the names of some of the most prominent families in St. Augustine. White families at any rate. go to any community or any town, uh, if you want to know something, how well they uh, are aware of their history, you go by the cemeteries and see how well the cemeteries are kept up. Adjacent to Evergreen Cemetery, out of sight, is a hidden graveyard. Robin Moore, an archaeologist, who is coordinator of the St. John's County Historic Department, says, Time, neglect, and indifference have taken their toll. If you were black and you died in St. Augustine, you were buried here. Even the dead are segregated. Whites that are buried over there don't have to look at the blacks that are buried over there. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> because they, they would start complaining. Beautiful Evergreen Cemetery is protected by a chain link fence and dense overgrowth. Just in case some of the blacks here want to go over and visit, yeah. they can't easily do that. And please don't tell them that St. Augustine is named for a black man. You've got the black on one side and you've got the white on one side. And as you could see, you could throw a rock and hit the white cemetery. It, it's strange and I think we always have to say if you're looking for black, you cross the track. Willie Cooper, president of the West Side Improvement Association says, Pinehurst and San Sebastian cemeteries have been in a state of neglect and disrepair for as long as he can remember. Only recently have volunteers managed to clear away some of the overgrowth and clean up some of the garbage. About a year and a half, two years ago, you really couldn't even see the headstones. This was buried, completely buried. You, you couldn't see it. You couldn't walk through it from the gate. Gwendolyn Duncan, founder of the local civil rights group Accord, 
says that's how things were when she and her daughter first visited Pinehurst over a decade ago. Ancestors were buried here somewhere, but the exact spot was unknown. My mom came out as a little girl. Her grandmother, which is my great-grandmother, used to come out and put flowers. Clues were very few, and one thing Gwen Duncan's mother remembered was a strong fragrance near the graves. My mom told me about the camphor tree, and we found it in this guy who used a saw and cut it, and you could just smell this sweet aroma throughout this whole cemetery. With no funds to clean up Pinehurst and San Sebastian, progress has been slow and difficult. This has been attempted many times before, but without maintenance, it will, after a few months, we'll go back to the same state. It's hardcore Florida environment and it tends to come back really quick. No one claims ownership. And no one admits any responsibility for upkeep. We're dealing essentially with an abandoned cemetery. In clearing these grounds, volunteer workers have thus far uncovered the headstones of 47 veterans dating back to the First World War. Many of those are in the rear of San Sebastian, which is almost impenetrable and sometimes littered with garbage. That tended to have been kind of a loitering area. Wearing the Purple Heart awarded for his service in Vietnam, Hank Thomas sets out to see for himself. So now we're going to where the vets are. He is upset by what he finds. This here is disgraceful. Buried and until recently forgotten, Men who served the United States in time of war to protect freedom for Americans on both sides of the fence. Veterans who fought for the country, and then when they come back here, this kind of indignity that they suffer. We may not make it as pristine as this one over here, but this is, on a human level, is unacceptable. This is World War II. So after he came back home to St. Augustine, they put him over here behind the fence. This should not be. This is not a Democrat or a Republican issue, not a conservative versus liberal. It's about human beings and your feelings about other human beings. The St. Augustine way of death is simply a reflection of the St. Augustine way of life. It represents the history of St. Augustine and the dichotomy of black and white in St. Augustine. You see the dichotomy yeah. immediately. Yeah. And you know, that's, you see that. Uh, the similarities are the same as we are living. For white folks who don't even want to be buried in the same ground as black folks, the afterlife may be a surprise. It's a good thing God is merciful and forgiving because I just don't believe there is a segregated heaven.